Alright, so in this video I want to talk about the drum groove from the Steely Dan song Peg. I had a friend request that I explain this groove, so that's what I'm going to attempt to do here today. Uh, the drummer on that song is Rick Morota. Um, there are lots of different drummers on that record, but Rick Morota was on Peg. And so, like I said, I'll, break, I'll play the groove, and then I'm going to break it down rhythmically, and then I want to spend a little time talking about the subtleties and the drum's tuning style and all of that. So, the tempo is about here. So it's one, two, three, four. So what we have going on there first is the hi-hat pattern. It's what I think you should be aware of, and that's on the and and uh of every quarter note. So it's one, e, and, uh, two, e, and, uh, three, e, and, uh, four, e, and, uh. All right. I'm going to play it slower now. Uh, without the open hi-hat. And before I do that too, you should know that the bass drum lands on one, the and of three, and the snare is on two and four. And I should also mention that I'm going to, in the description of this video, post a link to uh, a PDF file so you can see what it looks like on the staff. So, slowly, it'll be like this. I'm going to count myself in starting on the three. So, three, e, and, uh, four, e, and, uh, one, e, and, uh, two, e, so get that down first. It's a pretty atypical right hand pattern, so that's going to take a little while, possibly, um, with the coordination and the independence. And uh, so, you know. Take it slow, listen to that subdivision and all that. I recommend doing it with the metronome going off playing, you know, 16th notes so you can really hear those ands and uhs because it could be hard to hit those at first. All right, and so now I'll talk about the open hi-hat part of the beat. And this is what I think makes it really interesting and kind of hard to understand what he's doing. He's opening the hi-hat on the uh of one and the uh of two. So slowly, once again, I'll do that. It'll be just the right-hand pattern. One e and uh, two e and uh, three e and uh, four e and uh, one e and uh, two e and uh, three e and uh, four e and. And it's also important to note that it's not a super in-your-face open hi hat. You know, that's not the sound. It's more of a subtle texture that's just sort of under the radar. And I think this makes it really interesting. So with everything else and a little bit faster than that, it's. Tempo. All right, so you know you want to take it slow at first, like I said, and just build up those parts. And then once you get it down and up to tempo, play it with the tune. And then while you're listening, you know you'll you'll be able to adjust anything and get even more a deeper insight into what he's doing. And so just a little bit about the drum sound. Um, it's a very dry drum sound, and so which means there isn't really any reverb at all. And um, this is typical of lots of Steely Dan uh, records. But uh, in terms of tuning and just making the drum sound that way, I recommend moon gels, which are just these little gummy things you can put on your snare, easy to take off and put on. These muting rings, some people like, which do basically the same thing. Um, even if you get extreme, you know, more extreme, put a, like your phone or just some weight on there will really uh, make it that, have that dry sound. And then, you know, putting stuff in your bass drum as well. Uh, and, you know, obviously the deader the room is that you play in, the more you'll have that sound. So you can't always have control over it. If you're in a, you know, gymnasium, no matter what you do to your drums, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a lot of reverb there. But anyway, just give that stuff a try. Listen to the record and uh, take it slow and have fun with it. All right? Thanks.